Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the West Valley Water District uh, regular board meeting for February 2nd. Uh, we're going to go ahead and convene into order. Uh, we will start with a Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Director Garcia, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all and i believe we have uh pastor townsend on the line uh looks like you're connecting sir i'm not sure if you're there Would you be willing to, maybe Leah's? It looks like we might be stuck. <laughs> okay. Father, yeah. God, Father God, we come before you thanking you for this day. Thank you for everything you've done for us, Lord God, getting us here safely. We ask today, Lord God, that you be with this meeting today, Father God, that you'll give us wisdom, Father God. Give us your heart and your mind today, Father, and your wisdom. Thank you for um, each and everyone that's here. Bless this great nation we live in, Father God. Have us always remember, Father God, only what you do for what do for you would last. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you. All right. We will go into roll call of members. Madam Secretary. Thank you, President Young. At this time, I would like to conduct an oral roll call and request that each director respond with present when their name is called. Director Garcia. Present. Director Hawkins. Present. Director Moore. Present. Vice President Jenkins. Present. And President Young. Present. All board members are present. Thank you. Okay, adoption of the agenda. We have an agenda before us. Do we have a motion? Motion. Okay, motion made by Director Hawkins. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Director Moore. Any discussion? Seeing none, go ahead and call the roll. Thank you. Uh, Director Garcia? Yes. Director Hawkins? Yes. Director Moore? Yes. Vice President Jenkins? Yes. And President uh, Young? Yes. That passes 5-0. Thank you. Okay, public participation. Thank you. On March 4th, 2020, Governor Newsom declared a state of emergency resulting from the threat of COVID-19. On September 16, 2021, Governor Newsom signed Assembly Bill No. 361 into law. Assembly Bill No. 361 amends Government Code Section 54953E by adding provisions for remote teleconferencing participation in meetings by members of legislative body without the requirements of Government Code Section 54953B3, subject to the existence of certain conditions. The West Valley Water District adopted a resolution determining by majority vote that, as a result of the declared state of emergency, the district is adopting the state protocol which allows meetings in person and or via teleconference. Accordingly, it has been determined that all board and workshop meetings of the West Valley Water District will be held pursuant to Assembly Bill No. 361, the Brown Act, and will be conducted via teleconference and in person. Members of the public may listen and provide public comment via telephone by calling the following number and access code. Dial 888-475-4499, access code 840-293-7790, or, or you may join the meeting using Zoom. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, did we receive any uh, email or phone call public participation? And no emails were received for public comment and no public comment cards. At this time, if anybody on Zell would like to give public comment, they can use the raise hand icon. Right. Is there anyone who would like to speak? Please raise your hand online. No request to speak. All right, seeing none, we'll go ahead and close public participation. Uh, we have no presentations for this evening. That brings us to the consent calendar. Uh, is there anyone who wants to pull an item? If not, we'll go ahead and entertain a motion on motion. The consent. Mo first, do we have a second? I'll second. We have a second. Any discussion? Saying none, go ahead and call the roll. Thank you. Director Garcia? Yes. Director Hawkins? Yes. Director Moore? Yes. Vice President Jenkins? Yes. And President Young? Yes. And that passes 5-0. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, that takes us to business items. 
the first one, item 16, uh, is the rescheduling for the uh, the first meeting in f March coincides with the uh, trip to DC. Uh, so we did want to agendize to cancel that meeting and to reschedule that meeting. Uh, Van, did, uh, did I assume you want us to discuss also possible dates to reschedule? At your dis discretion, yes. And okay. there's two easy dates you see at the bottom if, if they potentially work for the board. Okay. The 7th and the 9th could easily be potentially the dates of the special meeting. Okay. Um, what is everybody's preference? Um, I could do either day if need be, although the Tuesday is probably better for me. Let's, how's everybody's availability? Hmm. Tuesday for me. Well, for then let's do Tuesday. I'm available Tuesday. Either day. Gentlemen? Oh, flexible. Work for work. Work. Yeah, work. All right. Okay. Yeah, so we're all good with that. Now, do we need a motion then to, or is uh, this just a discussion item? I think it'd be good to make a motion to, okay. to cancel the second and right. call a special meeting for the seventh. Okay. Can I get the motion? Motion to cancel the meeting on the second and reschedule it to Tuesday, March 7th. Thank you. Uh, second? I'll second. Okay. We have a first and we have a second. Uh, go ahead and call the roll. Thank you. Director, uh, Director Garcia? Yes. Director Hawkins? Yes. Director Moore? Yes. Vice President Jenkins? Yes. And President Young? Yes. And that passes by zero. Thank you. Okay. All right. The second one, um, we also had a meeting scheduled for February 16th. Um, and I correct me if I'm wrong, I believe it is the Fontana uh, State of the city. State event, of the correct. city is that same evening, and so I believe that there may be some folks who may want to attend that. So I guess the question before us is: Do we want to reschedule the meeting? Um, we could excuse up to two of you to attend uh, that instead, if you like. Uh, but uh, what's the board's pleasure? Uh, what time is the event? I believe it's five to eight. Five to eight. Five yes. to eight. Yeah, so it's pretty much right smack in the middle of when we would normally meet. So, uh, I mean, who's interested in attending? Um, I mean, I'll be attending. You'll be attending. So I'm interested in attending. I'm interested too. in attending too. Okay. okay. Can, can we? No, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say. I mean, do we want to then move it? Then it sounds like to accommodate. Can we have it on? Is Wednesday? Is the 15th? Oh. Is the 15th okay? That's fine. The day before? Yeah. I'll uh, zoom. I'll zoom in. You, okay. Okay. Um, well, that may... That. John, are you online? Can you bring up the district calendar? Yeah. If, if it's convenient to do so. Is, oh, is there a committee meeting? Uh, we can check as John okay. pulls up the district well, I, I, calendar. I, I, well, I was more thinking, Van, to what you told me about the re restrictions may change as far as Zooming. Yeah, that, that's not till is it March, Vince, the, the meeting? And it's probably okay. It'll oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm in the wrong month. <laughs> it'll be at the end of the month, and um, okay, they're, so they're fluid. So They're yeah. fluid. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so it does look like, if you look at the calendar in front of you, the 15th is open. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, if that's everybody. I'll make a motion. Okay, we have a first. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Okay. Um, Thank you. Call the roll. Can I ask who made the first? Uh, Director Moore. Moore. Thank you. Uh, Director Garcia? Yes. Director Hawkins? Yes. Director Moore? Yes. Vice President Jenkins? Yes. And President Young? Yes. That passes by zero. Thank you. Okay. Um, item 18. Uh, item 18 is on the agenda request of one of the um, uh, members of the board. Uh, staff will be happy to support this discussion any way uh, we can. And basically, it's a, it's a one-page uh, uh, resolution. Uh, hiring, it addresses the hiring freeze that's currently in place here at the district. Okay, so can I? So um, 
I wanted to talk about this resolution because it seems like, you know, maybe there was, you know, activities that were question, hiring activities that were possibly questionable prior to the execution of this, um, of this resolution that was executed January 16, 2020. And I feel that we now as a board, you know, things have changed and now um, hiring practices, you know, are coming to the board. And, and so I feel that I think it's time that now that we're gonna be getting a, a new general manager that we no longer need this hiring freeze. I feel that the district is, has gone into um, a, a, a com comfortable situation where we should let the management, the executive management for to backfill the positions. So when we have the, the general manager, I don't think that this should be in place anymore. So I thought I would bring it up and have it up for discussion because I think it would be good to take it down. Okay. Uh, any other discussion? I mean, I do know, and I think, um, you know, Channing can probably sp speak to it too. I mean, part of this was to, yes, restrict, but it's not a complete and total ban. Uh, it just requires some additional checking in with the executive team uh, or the executive committee. And I mean, certainly I think, yeah, we are definitely, I think, approaching that, 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 that point, especially with the hopefully soon selection of a permanent general manager. Um, I mean, I would be fine leaving it in place at least until then, but um, I don't know what the rest of the board's feelings are. Again, it's mainly just to, to have that extra layer of a, of a check in place. I mean, I mean, Channing was president when, when we kind of put this in place, but mainly just because we wanted to make sure that certain things were at least run by the board and the executive committee prior to making decisions. And I know that I've had many discussions with uh, Van and so has Channing. Uh, we've generally pretty much approved any recommendation he's brought before us with maybe only a couple very specific exceptions that had other issues that we had to deal with. So um, again, it, it sounds like it's a complete total freeze, but I don't think it's quite that. Uh, but again, I mean, what's the board's pleasure? I mean, <clears throat> and I do want to echo uh, my colleague, uh, Director Garcia's comments that we definitely moved past where we were at the time of the implementation. Matter of fact, I, I look at this and it, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to sleep tonight. I, I remember where this came from, <laughs> um, but um, I, I, so I understand, but I also agree with Director Garcia and I think President Young in saying that it is something that we probably should leave into pl in place until we get that new GM. It is something that we would want for them to have the opportunity to uh, uh, have the full discretion and authority of uh, the position. So, um, so yeah, I think that's what I heard both of you all saying in one way or another. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, yes, I do. Agree. That's exactly what I said. So when we have the, the new GM, you know, this temporary restriction, I think, should be lifted. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so, um, and I just wanted to bring it up because it's it's been in place for three years, and and I think that it's, I'm comfortable with with requesting or at least bringing it up for discussion that we should it's time for us to lift this um, restriction as soon as we have a, a a general manager in place. I mean, certainly, I couldn't agree more. I, I look forward to not having to have the these additional restrictions. And yeah, I I, I see it as we are definitely towards the end of having to need this. Um, so yeah, I'm in total agreement there. All right. Um, any other comments or discussion or? I agree, I think you get confident staff that can do these things and we trust them to do their job. Mm -hmm. um, and so once we get the staff here that we need to have here, we can lift this and let them do what they do. 
So will, will the motion be to have this be lifted effective um, having a new general manager? Or is that, or do we bring it back for discussion? I, I would say we would bring it back. Yeah, so once, once, once someone's in place and we have a contract and they're starting, I, mm -hmm. you know, trust me, this will probably be the first thing I'm going to add <laughs> on that agenda. So, because, I mean, Channing understands, like, we have to go through a lot of extra scrutiny during our, our business day <laughs> sometimes on this. So I'm, I'm more than happy to get it off my shoulders as soon as possible. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, Dan, did you have anything to add? Or We're good, you're, yes. you're in agreement? With the, I'm in agreement okay. with the board. All right. I think that um, sounds like we're all on the same page there. So we'll go ahead and move on to an update on Earth Day. Yeah. Earth Day is something we can be excited about. And here's the core of the presentation. Good evening, President Young, Vice President Jenkins, Honorable Board of Directors, Socorro Pantelian, Acting Manager of Government and Legislative Affairs. So I know um, some of you were in here last time, some of you were at uh, Earth Day uh, 2020, 2019. So 2019 was our first year we ever had Earth Day at the district. And unfortunately, due to COVID and COVID restrictions, we had to do online. And um, last online and last year that I was here, we did some school outreach. But this year, we're looking to bring it back here at West Valley here at our headquarters. So this is our Earth Day and Open House um, flyer, our marketing flyer. So we're looking to ho hosting on April 22nd, 2023 from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. here in the district. And we'll be marketing this through different avenues. Gosh. Okay. So our marketing plan includes social media. So Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and next door, which is a great venue. Um, as well, so our social media is kind of, we're going to do, do a little bit um, every two weeks, and then once we get to April, we're really going to get our outreach out there. But throughout the time, we're going to do some throwback Thursdays to 2019, some like who are you going to see there, some videos from our staff, really talking about Earth Day, because this is really an opportunity for our agency to showcase who we are to our community. Another avenue of marketing is our bill inserts that go into our, our uh, into the bills, and we'll have a English one side, Spanish on the other side, so we're hitting our communities. Um, additionally, we have our monthly newsletters that will talk about Earth Day, and we'll keep continue kind of promote more and more things about Earth Day to really get the community pumped for it. Um, other avenues are um, local network channels. So we are on we are on Rialto Network. We have a, our flyer up there. And then we're looking to do KFON and Colton. They have a channel as well. So the, those are free marketing event, uh, avenues. And of course, there's nothing like in-person outreach. Um, so as we go out to community events, we'll be out there marketing. We'll, yes, um, our team has identified city council meetings that will be, during public comment, we'll be you know, letting our council members know about this Earth Day event, school board meetings, and then chamber events as well. Um, so again, what what are we, what is the West Valley Waters your open house and, and vendor fair? So we'll have like I said, department demonstrations. We'll be uh, tours of FBR. We have landscape workshops. Our master gardeners are actually coming in and doing short workshops. Uh, we have a face painter, other community resources, uh, nonprofit organizations, oh. and in and out. Oh. But how do you get in and out? So we are going to have a little card, a little like passport card. Um, made in-house, printed here. We're going to have um, anyone who comes in, they have to get five stamps visiting West Valley booths as well as five five stamps from other vendors. Mm -hmm. So they'll turn it in, and that's how they get their in and out burger. Cool. Mm -hmm. So kind of our vendor partial contact list, uh, we've reached out to Home Depot. Um, I know IE Works has committed to a booth, Master Gardeners, Vertex doing some trash cans. But we're also trying to get them here. Colton Unified, Rialto Police is going to be here. Um, IHP said they're really interested in it. San Bernardino County Stormwater. And then I think we have a few more that I'm going to. Um, community Health System, Working Dogs for Warriors, The Beekeepers, Never Stop Grinding. But we're really, I have a great team in-house that is, they're calling, they're contacting, following up. 
we're really going out to the community and making sure that we have the community members here at the agency. Um, so we're also a little bit different from our prior Earth Day. Um, we want it, like I said, I want to make it more community friendly. We are reaching to local uh, groups to participate in, on stage, um, local talent. So we're reaching out to schools, community groups in our city. Um, I know we have a, a full court coming up. We have like a reptile show, show and tell. We're just trying to find the community to crafts. Additionally, we are we really want to measure how successful this event is by um, doing an exit survey. So we're going to be asking our attendees to fill a survey. We're going to have paper surveys, but we're also going to have QR um, to measure the feedback of the event and ask as well to like us on social media to really pull up those numbers. But attendees will receive a hose nozzle that will tie into the water use efficiency part of the event as well. The one issue we always face, though, um, is parking. Uh, we are very, very limited to parking here. And so the last time we looked at it was Eisenhower. We used Eisenhower High School as our parking area. Uh, why we choose th this area, it's safe and gated. It's controlled traffic. We're close by. But the problem is always the, the transportation back and forth. Um, so we are looking at different avenues for that. Um, I know after our external affairs committee, um, Director Garcia and I, we reach out to Edgar Montes from Rialto Unified and we're working on a way to hopefully help with the, the cost of the parking and the busing. Um, but honestly, we're, we are looking at quotes and ways to really lower those costs because it shouldn't be costing that much money for that, for parking and busing. So I, we did put together a um, budget. So the, I, originally at our external affairs committee, we proposed a different budget but it was a little more inflated because we were looking at just kind of a adding numbers and costs. But we really went to the quotes and looking at different vendors. So as you see, we have in and out Burger and they just do the burgers and, and chips. We'll have to get beverages. Um, Eisenhower parking rental and, and shuttle van working with the school district on that. So we'll be giving updates on that um, equipment. We will Three, we're looking at three bathrooms with an ADA bathroom, tents, um, round tables for where people eat, uh, pop-ups, additional pop-ups for our um, our employees when they're showcasing their departments, folding chairs, stage, PA system, and speakers. Um, like I said, landscape workshops, originally I had a cost there, but we were able to get the master gardeners to commit and get free workshops. Uh, we do have a face painter and we have a <laughs> reptile show. Um, we're looking at possibly doing giveaways for reusable bags, um, hose nozzles. So the hose nozzles, we're hoping with uh, Valley to get reimbursed as the water use efficiency for outdoor usage. Um, so I know we're working with our team on that. And then I put a cost over 2000 on booth giveaways. We do have materials in house, but just in case I wanna have a little buffer, we have to get more additional things. So for marketing, like I said, we have the bill insert. A possibility is a postcard. So a postcard, it is a little more expensive, but it's very effective. Um, people, I'll tell you, when we do postcards, we'll get the calls at the district once those postcards hit. Um, also, we're looking at newspaper ads, and those will be at the local newspapers, Pontiana Herald, Rialto Record, Colton Courier, so the local ones. And then photography, um, we have um, asked for three different quotes. Um, Drew, he's done prior work with me at Cucamonga, and then at Aqua, and he's a reasonable rate in comparison to others. So he's, um, that's who we're looking at to hire for photography. And of course, um, signage, we had a budget of signage as well. And then shirts for staff. That's, uh, I know staff loves the shirts and, it's, and, and for the board as well. It's to commemorate the event. So right now, the total estimate cost is 40000 um, And this is not include staff labor costs. That's a different, different pod. But like I said, our team is working diligently to make sure that we are finding avenues with our community members to lower those costs um, in for Earth Day. Mm -hmm. And we are keeping track um, with the project number to ensure that when we're giving up to external updates to external affairs committee and updates to the board, you are aware of how much this event is costing and how, you know, for, for, for our future. So like I said, how do we plan lower costs? It's a 
quotes from our local vendors, partnership opportunities, community sponsorships. Um, I have a great team in house. We do design and we will do the printing as much as we can. But if we have to go higher printing, we'll, we'll go to the printer. And then, of course, only necessary materials for our booths. Another avenue that we were looking at was uh, sponsorships for our um, partners. So it's not tax deductible, but they can do a sponsorship. And if we do look at the avenue of doing postcards or marketing or the bags, they can be added to to our marketing material and then gives them more exposure. So that's an avenue that we have looked at. And we've been working with finance on, on that, having a restricted account for just Earth Day and the sponsorships. Like I mentioned earlier, this event, um, although we only had it once, it was very popular. Our staff really enjoyed it because we was able to we were able to showcase who West Valley is to the community, and it also gives opportunity for our community to know what we do. And who knows, we inspire the next generation of you know water sewers here in Rialto, Colton, Fontana, and Bloomington. So this is event is very, you know, we're, we want to do a quality event, but also be cautious of the spending we're going to do here. And no, well done. Questions for Socorro? Just to add a couple words, if I may. Um, I wasn't here in 2019 when we did the first Earth Day, but um, the staff that were here, they talked very glowingly about it, how successful and how enjoyable the event was. Um, to somewhat match the same level of that shindig, yeah, it is forty thousand. It's it's not a small amount of money, but that's how much it is in today's dollar. And uh, so Coral has worked to try to get those costs lower. Uh, it is lower from the time we presented to external affairs. And uh, just so the board's aware, in the current budget, we have twenty five thousand for third party costs. So obviously, <coughs> underestimated those costs. But uh, uh, love to take any direction the board might have, and any, of course, any questions, please. Uh, so Coral's ready to answer them. <laughs> okay. How much did you spend in 20, 2019? What was your budget for 2019? So to be <laughs> honest with you, um, at the time, um, there wasn't, I, I went back, I was curious about that as well. Yeah, and okay. I went back and tried to look at the cost. Yeah. And unf unfortunately, I couldn't really track those numbers. Okay, that's um, fine. That, And that's fine, what I'm saying is you haven't done it in, you haven't done it in a couple I, of I'll estimate maybe 60 to 75 maybe. Okay, so, <laughs> so, so my, my, my question, my, my point is this. It's been a few years, right? Mm -hmm. So you say this in the last couple of years. So, <laughs> <laughs> and do what you need to do. <laughs> Get the kids well, up to come out and, and enjoy and learn mm -hmm. about the earth and, and, and about water. So, yeah. And yeah. I mentioned, we were really working with the school district as well to get students out and getting the word. And, you know, Col Colton Unified is Ralph Fuentes. He's like, I'll be there. I'll share it. And he was great about sharing Rialto yeah. Unified and Fontana Unified. So we're really trying to get the kids to come out as well. I'm excited. That's good. It's going to be fun. Yeah. And as um, I guess I'm probably the only, I mean, because you weren't quite on yet, were you? Yeah. Um, but did you come? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, you were. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was a really great event. Um, yeah, the questions which I have, of course, you all know me as the penny pincher around here. Uh, never really got quite answered on how much we did actually mm -hmm. spend that time, but um, I think I think she said. Yeah. No. Oh no. 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 I mean, we're getting a good no, deal. Actually. No. No. I agree. And 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 look, it was a fantastic event, and I completely support us doing it again. And I'm glad to see that it seems like the. The costs are a little more defined because last time it just seemed like there was no budget and it was just like go out and do, just spend, <laughs> um, which is fine. I mean, it was our first time, but uh, certainly as we do more of these, we'll learn how to, you know, uh, manage it. And uh, again, I'm looking forward to the event. I, 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 I know the team will do a fantastic job as they did last time. And, you know, it was really a great opportunity, I think, for the staff to really interact with, with the people in the community and to really let them see what all the things that go into providing them water. I mean, I think, you know, we're like, okay, yeah, yeah, you guys pump water, you maybe have a tank, but mm -hmm. I don't think people realize how much goes in between all those points to get it to their faucet and, and you know, particularly having 
the workers there interacting and having little different booths that they showed different things. I, you know, it was really fantastic, I think. And, you know, I, it was really great, I think, for the kids. I mean, I don't have any of my own, but I certainly saw plenty of parents with their kids and the kids were, you know, playing with all the little doodads and turning this, turning that and kind of, you know, getting that exposure. And I thought it was really great, you know. So, again, I'm looking forward to it and thank you for, uh, being cost conscious and trying to get it down. I joked with Van that I would run the shuttle service if we, <laughs> you know, for, for, for some of our earlier projections. But <laughs> so I do appreciate all the efforts on, on that from the finance committee side of it. Um, so uh, does anyone else have any questions or? Um, well, I do have some questions. Can you bring back the cost, please? It up or I have to bring it back. Oh, John has to. <clears throat> I don't want to call it. I don't want to call it entertainment. Mm -hmm. But um, is there other type of exhibits that we can bring? like that shows like water exhibits for educational purposes? So we have reached out to like save our water. I mean, I know I've reached out to Valley uh, Municipal Water District. We're other nonprofits and agencies as well. We're trying to reach out to them to make it more about water education. But it, it's, it is difficult though, because the same day of Earth Day and other agencies are doing a lot of birthday events <laughs> on the same day. Yep. Just wondering if we can, any, any ideas we, uh, in, addition, in, in addition to these? Like. We, we also, um, we were talking about reaching out to certain water, high school water classes or high school, more geared to that area so they can have their own booths and have their own show, show and tell of what they're doing. So we, we, we do want to bring that aspect into Earth Day. Have <laughs> we reached out to the conservation district? We did. And, and it's a little bit of a cost. Okay. Well, you know, you did from what you showed me. You already we already saved eight thousand no, dollars somewhere. No, more <laughs> <Yeah>. like thirty. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, I I I I understand. Um, well, I'll finish director. Okay. Darcy, so, from from twenty nineteen to now, with inflation, you it seems like we're we're paying about thirty thousand dollars less. But I'm just what I'm trying to say is I don't want to try to save two, three thousand dollars and and not get a different exhibition type of thing. This is this is for the community. This is for the children. Yeah. I want them to be engaged. And and, you know, we haven't had one for two years. Mm -hmm. So I think that I'm not saying go all out, but I think that we should if if, if we can find another display mm -hmm. that is an educational and that if it'll cost us. I'm hoping that the board will go will be okay with it because it is an educational. Um. Well, uh, if I could just maybe point out, um, you know, I mean, yes, we have these. What I mean, the bottoms now covered up, but three items there under the entertainment. But mm -hmm. you know, keep in mind that you also have all the staff manned booths too. So it's mm -hmm. so I mean, there's a lot of stops which they'll be able to engage in. So. Uh, I mean, I agree. I mean, if 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 staff can, you know, contract or find mm -hmm. other options, I mean, that's always great. But I want you to understand that there was a lot of places with the staff where they could interact with and have those uh, experiences. You don't have to bring in someone for each booth. I just want you to kind of. I'll, yeah. Oh. Yeah. You'll be recognized. Well, yeah. I know who I need to bring in when it's Christmas and birthday time. Um, because those budgets get blown every year in my house dealing with the kids. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I wish. <laughs> I wish. Um, yes, I think, you know, I think a good point was made regarding inflation and the idea that somehow in these inflationary times you reduce the spending like 40% um, uh, is – just really great and I think we have our eyes on the ball I also think that 
<clears throat> I agree with Director Garcia. We don't want to nickel and dime ourselves mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. you know, this isn't for, you know, we're here. We authorize a lot of spending. You know, <laughs> I can name the categories and things we've spent money on. Um, I go back to the expressions I saw on all these children's faces, mm -hmm. how much they were learning, how much they were engaged, how they had an opportunity to really learn about our agency, to learn about sustainability, to learn about being a good environmental steward. And <clears throat> that's the kind of investment that we need to make. Um, I think, you know, they've obviously done a good job. There has been substantial scrutiny to this project, literally line item by line item. They've gone through this. Um, and I, but I agree with Director Garcia that we don't want to shortchange the kids to have some mm. activities. I mean, it's very hard in the schools these days, especially in the public schools, for them to have hands-on opportunities mm -hmm. to learn. They don't even go on field trips like we, mm -hmm. they used to. No. No. They don't do all kinds of stuff like they used to. And this sure. is an opera. That's why I believe even in 2019, as much as the district was going through, people were hungry to learn about mm -hmm. what was going on. And I think that the ratepayers would actually feel good that we're spending, mm -hmm. you know, at least some of this bill money back on them and, and allowing their kids uh, to have the opportunity to learn. So, um, you know, uh, you know, 40,000, 45,000, we've cut 25,000 in spending. I'm looking at Van, I'm looking at Bill, they, are like hawks over there watching every <laughs> penny and I'm comfortable they're gonna, you know, keep this on track. So, you know, for the kids, man, for the kids. <laughs> Any other? I'd like to say that we really haven't talked a lot about the sponsorship avenue, but that mm -hmm. in fact may help yes. bring in some revenue to help with the additional costs that we're talking about. and. I, I really commend Socorro for using the creativity to come up with that that particular idea, and hopefully we'll 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 catch some fish with that. <laughs> well, I mean, I think most of the board's going to be going to the state of the city. Maybe city of Fontana yeah, might uh, be willing yeah. to sponsor this event. Uh, maybe the Chamber of Commerce, um, mm. you know, would certainly help I, a long I, way. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well. Yeah. Mm. But no, I mean, uh, I agree with everyone uh, that's, you know, we've come a long way, certainly, in how, how, how we're proceeding on this one compared to the last time. But does anyone else have any questions for Socorro or staff? Or? Great job. Yeah. Great yes. job. Yes, well done. agree. Yeah. Well presented. Yes. No questions? No more questions? Good. No. Perfect. All right. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Socorro. All right, well, that takes us to item 20, which is mine. <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll, I'll try to be as brief as I can, although I do need to kind of explain a little bit here. Um, so I did, I did ask for, for this to be put on the agenda, um, you know, especially now that we have a rotating presidency. I think it's good for everyone as you come into this position to maybe have a few ideas or initiatives that you might want to work on. Uh, but I also think it's important to make sure you don't get too far ahead of yourself and make sure that, that you have the support of the board. Uh, so that's why I asked to have this item on here. In my time on the board, <laughs> nitrates have come up repeatedly in the seven plus years I've been on this board. Um, and we've had different ideas over you know, many, many years now of how to maybe start to try to address some of that. Uh, when I was first here, uh, we were looking at a system called the Hall Reactor and trying to get the state to give us some funding through the cleanup and abatement funds uh, to re-equip Well 39 so that we could start to tap into our Chino Basin rights. Unfortunately, we didn't get that funding, so that idea kind of fizzled away. and. Then the next idea that kind of came around was the fixed bed reactor here as part of the FXB or, or, or the, um, in conjunction with the FBR. And there was a lot of hope at the time that that technology 
if successful, could uh, really be something that could be scalable and something we could use to maybe also address nitrates. Unfortunately, as all of you know, that that project kind of didn't quite pan out either. Uh, so I've seen a couple ideas kind of come and go over my time here. And I kind of look at it the, this way, is that we have five groundwater basins, one of which we haven't been able to tap into in really the last like 30 years, practically speaking, the Chino Basin. We have the Rialto Colton Basin, which is very restricted. And with the the whole perchlorate situation, we were forced to kind of expand elsewhere. And honestly, historically, it was probably, a, I mean, it wasn't great at the time, obviously, but it, it, I mean, it really forced the district to diversify in ways that it really hadn't up until then. Mm -hmm. We've done more and more in the Bunker Hill Basin, and we have plans you'll see here in the coming months with next year's budget that in the next, you know, a bunch of wells out in the Bunker Hill Basin and Linda and her team are working to identify sites and I 100% support it because we we're going to need that increased production um, but unfortunately there is one basin that I've always felt like we're we're kind of like on the precipice of falling off a cliff and that's the North Root Riverside Basin down kind of in the Bloomington area we we have several wells down, down uh, in that area, but they're kind of like on the edges of the zone, and that's because most of the area is super high in nitrates, mm -hmm. and we can't really tap into it, and it's almost kind of a lost resource in a way, and so the this whole issue of nitrates, again, has always kind of been, been something in the back of my mind, and as some of you know, in the last couple of years, well, I'm going to year three at the county, I've been running their Office of Research and Grants at the hospital, and it's opened my eyes to a whole other world of the healthcare industry, but really just when it comes to government research in general. And it kind of gave me some ideas, and so this is kind of my crazy harebrained idea that I want your guys' hopefully support and, um, you know, or at least willingness to entertain for the time being, is that... Part of the issue we have is that there are technologies out there to treat nitrates, but they are very expensive. And it's cheaper to go far away and drill a new well mm. and hope that you hit clean water <laughs> than to just re-equip an existing well. And one of the difficulties, and you know, and Jamie, who who represents us in DC, I, 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 I know is on, and he'll appreciate me telling this story, but I know a few years back, him and I went to a nondescript office building in Alexandria. Didn't look like much from the outside, but it was the DOD, and Jamie, you and I went through security like I've never seen in my entire life, and I've worked <laughs> for the federal government, and that's saying something. Uh, they had to do a background check on me, an FBI background check, be even before the trip. I mean, it was, it was a different experience, and the reason Jamie and I did that while the rest of the board was off at other meetings was because we, it's hard to keep government's eyes on the ball. Oftentimes, funding flows to whatever's the sexiest thing. And so we were there particularly to make, make sure DOD didn't forget about the perchlorate issue. But when it comes to nitrates, it's a legacy pollutant that's been here for over 100 years now because it goes back to the agricultural days. Mm -hmm. It's not sexy. And really the problem when it comes to the research side is that there really isn't a lot of money out there for studying nitrates. You can find a lot for desal, because desal's sexy. Nitrates isn't so sexy. And so unfortunately, where that leaves producers like ourselves and other agencies in the area is that we have to keep working around this contaminated water, hoping that one day someone will develop technology that might make it practical. Well, what I'm proposing to do is to maybe leverage the position we're in as a district work with some of our neighboring agencies. What I want to explore is a initiative to see if we can maybe jumpstart some of that research. And I'm looking at particularly two different options. 
And I've been collaborating with actually a friend of Dan. Uh, some of you might have met him, Mr. Ed Perez. He is a law professor at Cal Poly Pomona uh, and actually has quite a bit of experience in, um, in the water uh, industry from a law perspective and also working with um, patents too. And he's been having some preliminary conversations with people at Cal Poly Pomona, which I'm a graduate of. And particularly, I'm looking at two different possibilities. One is to fund some type of a research grant in collaboration with other agencies, if I can hopefully get, ideally, we would want it to be more than just us, because it affects more than just us, to fund a research grant to study new technologies. And the whole purpose is to not only destroy the nitrates, but to do it in a cost-effective manner. Because really, that is the whole thing. We, we know lots of ways to kill it now, but how do we kill it in a way that keeps that cost per acre foot to the point to where it actually makes sense for us to actually do it versus just going off and drilling somewhere else? And so that is one possibility to actually just straight up fund our own research grant, put it out there and let, let you know, uh, potential re researchers submit applications. Obviously, there'll be a lot of technical aspects that'll need to be worked out as far as how the, all that. And then the other aspect which uh, Ed's been really helpful with is also maybe funding directly into schools like Cal Poly or UC Riverside, which also has a very large agriculture program, say, look, we're going to give you a little pot of money for the school then to do as a research project. So it's a great way to get local kids involved in trying to solve a local issue. Um, and ultimately, you know, these things sometimes are successful, sometimes they're not. It's kind of a roll of the dice. But you know, to me, if we can help move that, that, that ball a little further down the field to where, you know, in three or five years, because these things generally run about three or five years, maybe there's a breakthrough that can be a new technology that can let us treat nitrates in a cost-effective manner that would make it now feasible for us to actually use the water that is literally within our own boundaries versus having to go outside of our service area in, in order to meet the needs of the future. Also, one potential, which I know Bill might, might particularly like, is that we can also, depending, we're, a lot of details still to work out, but the possibility, too, that the district would own a piece of that patent so that there may be money coming back on the back end if there is a breakthrough. So that's kind of the idea I've been bouncing around. Again, I've been working with Ed, who, who's been doing this for no cost at this point, but certainly I would love to maybe bring him on at a, um, you know, like a special counsel to work with Vince. Um, but really, I just kind of wanted to bring it to the board, see if you all had any questions, any concerns, because I would like to start to talk to other agencies to start working with staff on what this could potentially look like. And again, to see if we can try to build a partnership, a collaborative, between us and some of the other agencies, possibly even getting um, you know, some collaboration with our federal and state partners as well. Um, because again, the, the bigger the pot we can make as far as funds, the more, the more projects we could fund with, with, with these opportunities and increases the odds that maybe someone might develop something that is usable. So that's kind of my harebrained idea in a nutshell. I appreciate everyone listening to me kind of walk, walk you all through my thought process there. But does anyone have any concerns if I did that? <laughs> I have questions for you. Sure. Okay. Well, uh, first of all, um, I love that you're trying to come up with a remedy to clean up our nitrates and groundwater. Um, that's awesome. I know that's an untapped basin that we haven't had the opportunity to do. But I do feel that um, what would what we would need is a feasibility study report to do this, and to do that, obviously, like you just mentioned, it's going to cost money. Mm -hmm. And so, is there is 
are you seeking for grant money to pay for this feasibility study report? Like, what is the mechanism to start that study? That's well, that's my question. I want to <clears throat> chime in, but great. So first and foremost, I think the issue that you laid out is probably the most significant issue, um, not only in our neck of the woods, but when you look at Central California, mm -hmm. Imperial, uh, um, rural Riverside County, mm -hmm. uh, you know Modesto, uh, nitrates, and it's it's unfortunately it's proliferated everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, what I really understand you to be saying is that you know you want to begin this collaborative conversation our agency helping to facilitate how we we as individual agencies can come together to be able to not only think about but someday make this investment for mm -hmm. that um to be able to address it and make it economically feasible i agree with the concept wholeheartedly um you know uh, I think we need the ability to allow staff mm -hmm. to do their job, which, mm -hmm. you know, I think you have to have those broader conversations. What are, as everybody thinking, we have aqua, we have yes. other, you know, because that's the kind of research in the, at the level. Mm -hmm. This is very pre pre preliminary, preliminary for sure. Yeah. So, so. <laughs> So are you asking, you know, are we in generally agreement with, you know, the concept allowing staff to explore what it would take to have some level of a regional collaboration on the nitrate issue? Is that like kind yeah, of that's, taking what you're saying? Yeah, that's essentially what I'm asking for okay. is, is just kind of a, a a blessing for me to work with staff to start working maybe with some of our regional partners to see if we can put something like what I just described together now obviously we haven't agreed to anything there mm -hmm. you know all the details still 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 need to be fleshed out right. um, again I, I just don't want to just start running out and doing stuff without the board knowing and be having some support for what I'm su suggesting yeah I think and we got a good suggestion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, what, yeah. well, just to start the conversation and yeah. no, talk I'm, to people mm -hmm. and you calling presidents of other districts and saying, what are you guys thinking about nitrates? We're doing nitrates. Well, and June's well, certainly already. going to be my first person to okay. talk to well. since she's already here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, that's, a, 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 again, I just don't want to get too far ahead of the board. And, and, and I agree, there's a lot of details which would still need to be fleshed out as far as you know what 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 is available out there what can we pool together what can we bring together you know and again then even assuming all that goes well then there's a lot of other details that have to be fleshed out as far as okay how do we define right. a working solution that is economical what what are the 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 technical aspects so again i just kind of want your guys's blessing to start working with staff to start putting some things together to obviously bring back for further discussion so when you say work with staff what does that mean and i only ask that because you know from what i've seen in presentations with the, the um engineering committee staff staff is already like busy so would you want to have one staff assigned to help you or like what is what are you yeah. trying to well, like, do? Um, I'm not going to wade too much into numbers and things like that. No. I will leave that to the general manager to, mm -hmm. yeah. to, to decide. I just want the blessing of the board to at least proceed with some of those conversations. But I'll work with Van. We'll have discussions on the topic if everybody's okay with that. And as the executive committee, we'll, we'll see who we need to bring into those conversations. But, yeah, I don't want to get into specific numbers i don't uh, think that's really appropriate for us okay yeah. i think it's like anything else when you're working with you work in hospitals i work in hospitals <laughs> yeah. we have peer groups that we talk to yeah mm -hmm. zoom calls once a week and just talk about trends and things like that and yeah. things that we want to see move forward 
And so it starts with the dialogue and the foundation, and then breaks up into subgroups and moves over. So it breaks a movement of its own. Mm -hmm. But um, I think that's a great idea because it gets everybody talking about it. And once we get to talk about it, we find out more knowledge about it, and it stays in the forefront. I think that's what you want to do. Because mm -hmm. yeah. okay. even like having a regional grant joint grant application i mean not to say it may be some different but i'm just saying that's how it starts too yeah. like we don't know what the answer yeah i mean are it yet. can be an you don't a, know yet. a, a yeah. application where, where we're trying to seek funds from other people yeah, which so, would yeah. then we could turn around and then grant yeah. out but i mean again there's a lot of details and pieces that, which yeah. which which definitely need to be fleshed yeah. out but mainly i just Again, it's it, uh, it's an issue that's always bugged me, and it's something that I feel that if we just wait for the industry to catch up, I think we might be waiting forever because it's not a hot issue for the powers to be to to solve this problem. Because again, they're on the, whatever the pollutant of the day is, and. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is, could you imagine how revolutionary, I mean, you mentioned all the other regions of California, but I mean, just w within our region, how, how much of an impact that would have on all the agencies in this area if there was a, a solution to nitrates that was cost effective. I mean, it would open up a lot more opportunities for all of our districts to, to be able to meet future needs. We all wouldn't be running over to the Bunker Hill Basin all trying to fight over the same little pot of water. So, again, to me, it's like this This is, you know, very aspirational. Uh, I understand it. I mean, <coughs> again, we, we could do all this and they do all a bunch of research and no one really comes yeah. through with a breakthrough. Right. But you only need one person to get it right, yep. you know. Yep. and. And again, I just see it, you know, especially where I've been sitting at the county and all the research I've been dealing with at the, um, you know, learning about how federal re research works is that the researchers follow the, the money. So if there's no money out there for it, they don't go out and research it. Yeah. We're convinced, Greg. Okay, sorry. We're convinced. Sorry, I'm very, very We're, we're convinced. We're <laughs> You guys are going to like kind of figure out how to have these conversations. Yeah. It's like a study for the study. Yes. Yeah, almost. Yes. And so, yeah, we're be, good. What's the motion? Yeah. It, What's the motion you well, want no, to Well, no, but no motion. I, I'm okay. just simply you just wanted to bring you all up okay. here. Obviously, right. once we get to any okay. substantive okay. things, we will bring it back. Okay. All right. <laughs> so <laughs> we did, Greg. We good. Right. We're good. Sorry. We're all on the same page. <laughs> we'll have that peer group next yep. time we talk. Yep. All right. But thank you all. I appreciate you indulging me <laughs> and my nerdiness. Awesome. All right, board reports. <laughs> it's a party. Uh, anyone have a board report? I do. I want to give a board report. I want to thank the um, board for um, voting uh, last year to allow me to be a fellow in the Water Education for Latino Leaders program. Um, we had our first uh, event. What was that? Two weeks ago now, um, we went to the Coachella Valley. It was a very uh, great event. We learned about the Salton Sea. Um, we had homework, and I was like, I'm busy doing reading all day, but they had us homework to learn about the Salton Sea and its history, and then also to um, learn about some of the current issues, and one of them is the lithium, lithium. deposits. Mm -hmm. um, supposed to be the fourth largest in the world. Mm -hmm. um, there is a significant investment. There has yeah. been approval from the state to um, uh, allow for the drilling for the lithium. It's just figuring out which contractor. Um, there's also going to be a geothermal um, uh, plant there as well. And so, you know, in the bottom of the Salton Sea is all this literally billions of dollars. And I think one of the most complicated issues we had to grapple with is that um, how are the local people going to be impacted? If you're familiar with that area mm -hmm. in the Imperial County and the eastern side of Coachella uh, Valley, it is one of the um, poorest places in the state. Um, we also explored um, the uh, uh, related to water and particularly water justice. They call them the Polanco Parks, our Senator Polanco. Uh, when he was in the Senate um, for the farm workers, once the farm growers got rid of the housing they provided, they um, created like these kind of organic um, uh, uh, trailer parks or mobile home parks. Mm -hmm. 
and there was a big issue uh, regarding these parks when they kind of spread up in these unincorporated parts of the county <laughs> nobody knew about. And one of the things that at that time Senator Polanco did do was to allow for them in Riverside County in that part of uh, Eastern Riverside County to allow for them to have no more than 12 mobile home units in one place. Now, seemed like a great idea um, as far as dealing with affordable housing and workforce. However, one of the challenges that they face now that we had to go tour was the water and access to clean drinking water for these um, uh, migrant workers. Um, who are, um, and because uh, the water in their area and their table has a lot of nitrates because of agriculture mm -hmm. and they have to have these filters and there's a big challenge um, in order to fund those filters um, because you have private landowners that these uh, parks are on and so who's going to, of course, there's a mandate to ensure there's clean drinking water, but like the government usually does, there's no money to go along with it. And so that challenge and uh, seeing the failures of wells in these local areas was, was very challenging. We also had um, opportunity to meet with um, a member of the, uh, the former president, I forget his name right now, uh, or the chair of the uh, Colorado River um, and our delegation there, I learned something. I, about the Colorado River. There's a seven state compact, an international mm -hmm. treaty with yep. Mexico. Um, the challenges that we have for folks who've been paying attention this last week, California, he, he, because the one water district, I'm not going to name who, um, <laughs> failed to be a part of the five water districts who have a right to vote on it. Um, it's, it's a little further east. Um, and just <laughs> some of the interests involved in the rights of water and whose rights are more mature than others in California's mm -hmm. being the most mature and how we look at um, overall as a state that we want to be sustainable. We want to reduce our use of water. And however, when it comes to some of these agreements, we're the one with the big sticks and well, you know, we're not going to do it proportional. We're only going to do it in what we see as proportional for mm -hmm. us. And then you guys should decrease it by this amount and we only increase it that amount. So it's a very challenging and complicated <laughs> and I had never really got to learn about um, the Colorado River and then obviously the um, international component of it. And then finally, um, <clears throat> the other person, we got two presentations, professors from Cal Berkeley about the impacts of water in Hastings and um, for they were ones from Hastings, the other ones from Berkeley, and talking about the unique issues in Central California, mm -hmm. and um, uh, water the reduction. What is it called, Van? When the water reduces from um, uh, after you take water out the aquifer uh, for so long, and then all of a sudden the land starts subsiding. Subsiding. Sub sub subsiding. Subsiding. Okay. Yes, and and how prevalent that is in Central California. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it was a really good program. I was there with 17 other local elected officials from cities, from uh, school districts, a wide range of uh, individuals, um, learning all there to learn about water. And it was really uh, a really um, great time. And I learned a whole lot. And they, it, it, from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., they, they they almost didn't feed us. Um, they were just like, you need to sit in these sessions. You can't even look at your phone. And so it was real serious. <laughs> and so I know we have our next one coming up on February 10th. And we're going to be in Tehachapi at the Cesar Chavez Memorial, learning about water in the um, Bakersfield area. And so I look forward and thank you for the board for allowing me to be able to participate. It was very good and if you all have an opportunity when they have their next um, cohort I hope you all would participate and join that's fantastic Channing mm -hmm. awesome any other re reports I do have a question sure how did the Salton Sea start well <laughs> well from the uh, left from the Colorado River there was a flood well, there was flooding, and what ended up happening is the growers kind of got together. They wanted to be able to control it, and that's where the runoff kind of goes to this day. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, you're right. <laughs> well, I mean, roughly. I'm not a scientist. And so it was really, it was really That's good. That's what it was. It was flooding from yeah, the Yeah, it was Colorado flooding. River. And so, no, we, hey, they had, we pretty had pretty sure real Pretty sure there was homework. a broken levee in there, too. There's somewhere. broken levees. Yeah. There's, there's, well, there's other stuff, yeah, you know, in the a... story, too, mm -hmm. about, you know, the use of the sea. We went to what, I mean, I could go on and on about the trip. We went to what was deemed the Yacht Club, so back in the 50s. <laughs> I'm sure it was, but now there's no, no. yacht yeah. anywhere near. Uh, there's no boats, there's no yeah. people swimming. It's it's a different. Well, my uh, grandfather yeah. uh, used to be the president of the Colton Boat and Ski Club, okay. and they used to go down the Salton Sea all the time. But like, it was back when it was very heavily used yeah. back yeah. back in the day. And yeah. I went fishing yeah. there when I was five. Yeah. 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 Yeah, uh, well, f yeah, fantastic, and I know I I actually had the pleasure of going to back back when uh, Westcast was still in existence. We had a conference where we had the one of the uh, deputy chiefs of the Bureau of Reclamation gave a whole presentation yes. on the on the Colorado Compact. So mm -hmm. I've I've heard a lot of that yes. stuff, and it is a wild history if you've never actually read it, and it's it's one of those things where it's like be careful if you make a deal with the devil as as the commissioner said because you never know when the terms might come due uh and certainly they're they're having a lot of issues there now with this present situation yep. right. uh if no other board reports we'll go ahead and go to the general manager yeah uh john's gonna pull up a video for me um, i don't know if the board's ever seen what a main break looks like when uh staff arrives john could feel free to uh, play it but this is what it looks like when phil's staff arrives to a, a water main break a water pipeline break um, we have about 10 to 12 main breaks per year um, mm -hmm. given the agency our size was about 400 pipelines if we have 60 main breaks or less per year we're doing good we have 10 to 12 so knock on wood we're in very good shape uh, but we do have main breaks uh, there's two types of main breaks, ones that are emergencies and ones that aren't. This one would be construed as an emergency. So I just thought it would be interesting for the board to see what it looks like. Uh, going on to the next slide on the next slide. Uh, we also got news about the state water project. The state water project is the conveyance system that does in part move water from north to south. Um, to me, it's a barometer of what the drought conditions are, spe specific to uh, water supply conditions, especially here in Southern California. Uh, you can see the allocations in the recent two years were very, very low, historically low at 5%, uh, but they just announced last week we're at 30% now, which is excellent news for Southern California. The West Valley doesn't rely on that water. It's nice that our region has that water. Mm -hmm. And uh, a small part of our um, service area that's in the metropolitan area, uh, is a little bit relieved if you heard me mention in the past uh, there was some possibility we might face penalty waters during the drought for that small area of our service area but for 30 percent allocation that should go away um, next item uh, we made the newspaper today the front page of not one but two newspapers today if you see the article in the bottom center uh, mm -hmm. that is us uh, earning the financial reporting distinction report remember at the last board meeting on the 19th we reported that well i guess two uh, newspapers picked that up so uh, congratulations again and again we made the front page of two different newspapers same article for for both and next uh, the day after the last board meeting, the day mm -hmm. after the 19th, we got noticed we won another award. This time we won the award you see on the right. We won the uh, D Distinguished Budget Presentation Award. Uh, if you remember at the last board meeting, Bill mentioned that if we win three separate awards, we get the triple crown. Well, three awards you see on the screen on the, on the bottom. Um, the one we got in the newspaper for was uh, number three, the Popular Annual Finance. Uh, financial reporting award the one we just won is number one distinguished budget uh, uh, presentation award as you can see we've won each of these awards at least once one award we've won 11 times but we're still not a triple crown winner because to be a triple crown winner you gotta win all three in the same fiscal year so we won one and i know bill and jose are committed to win the next two so we'll become a triple crown winners we won the very very few agencies in our area to be triple crown winners so uh, great job on staff keep up the good work and get the triple crown please um, next here. item, last item. Congratulations to Director Moore. He is a living <laughs> legacy. <laughs> we, we got, we got, 
we got notice that he uh, got award the Norris McDonald Living Legacy Award. It does go to individuals dedicated to protecting the environment, enhancing human and plant ecologies, and the African American participation in the environmental movement. This award is being presented by the Inland Valley News. Uh, if you'd like to go, uh, it is a free event, but we do need the RSVP. If you're interested in going and have time, please let Ovia know she can sign you up for that. And Director Moore, congratulations. And with that, that concludes my report for this evening. It's not every day you get to sit next to a living legend. Um, <laughs> um, yes, congratulations, uh, Calvin. Um, uh, well deserved. Um, um, unfortunately, I won't be able to make it. I'll be out of the state at a conference. Uh, but certainly, if I was in the area, I would be there for, for you. But con congratulations nonetheless. Uh, again, very well de deserved. Legal counsel. <clears throat> Thank you, President Young. The uh, Interim General Counsel and Interim General Manager met in closed session with the uh, Board of Directors on the closed session items on the item entitled <coughs> Zavala versus West Valley Water District. The bo Board um, voted unanimously to settle that case in the amount of $62,500. That concludes my closed session report. All right, thank you. And with that, we're adjourned.